Welcome to another installment of Friday Night Restorations. This time out, I'm going to be taking a look at an Admiral Radio, I believe from the mid-50s. It is a Model 5R37 with the 5R3 chassis. All American 5, meaning there are 5 tubes with the filaments wired in series and there is no transformer. I have not worked on a radio like this before so I'm not quite sure what to expect inside. I have not located service info for it yet. Because before I do that I want to take a look inside to make sure that it's restorable at all. You know, if something like the speakers missing or horribly damaged or there's some other major issues inside then uh, most likely that would be the end of the project. This is not a particularly valuable radio so I wouldn't want to spend a whole lot of time, effort, or money restoring it. Nonetheless, I think it'll be an interesting little project. down next to the AC plug here. Okay. I'm still holding this in, I, I suspect there's an internal antenna. Yep. plugs on this, it's just that it's so it's been stuck on there so long. Can't get out. Let's see, cord. Oh, there we go. Alright, well, there's not a whole lot to it. Well, that's interesting. It's not point to point wiring, it's actually a little circuit board down in there. That should be interesting to work on. Speaker and I'll put transformer. Yeah, it looks to be in pretty good condition. Looks like there's one can electrolytic down in there. And a couple paper caps. And what looks to be a little cup plate behind one of the tubes. A cup plate is a hybrid module. It's probably some resistors and capacitors. Inside there. Alright, so certainly looks like a restoration contender. So now I am going to try to find some service info. So it's a model 5R37. Let's see what the internet has to say. The first place I generally go to when I'm looking for schematics is a website called nostalgiaair.org. And if you go to resources, they list all the manufacturers. Here's Admiral. And I do not see it. We're looking for the 5R3 chassis. And we've got 5R10 through 5R14. Now sometimes these are close enough, so let's take a look at 5R10. Well, it is an All-American 5, but unfortunately it's using the older style octal tubes of 12SA7, 50L6, and so on. So that's not right. Yeah, I'll keep looking through the rest of these 5R series and see if I find any matches. Well, unfortunately none of those match, so now let's do the obvious thing. Let's just search Google for Admiral 5R37 schematic and see what we come up with. Alright, well, so I see there's a lot of links if I want to buy this service info. 
and here's a link to radiomuseum.org which I am not a member of because it's a rather complicated process that I just don't want to deal with so I can see a picture of it and I can, I'm teased with the schematic but that's all I get unless I decide to join when you click on it you get this mess but at least we get some info here See, it says year 1954 55, so definitely mid 50s. AC DC set, so it could run off of DC if you happen to have 117 volts DC available. Uh, they say down here it is in Sam's photo fact. Uh, they also mention it's in Beatman. Now, I do have some of the Beatman service manuals, but I don't have the radio ones uh, from the 50s, so keep searching. All right, and get it from Sam's. You know, you've probably seen a lot of guys selling Sam's service info on eBay, but you know, Sam's is still around, and you can buy the service info from them directly. I think what happened is the copyrights have expired on their older publications. So all those guys on eBay are doing is they got a copy of it, they're just making photocopies, or they scanned it and burned it onto a CD. So when I do need to buy them, I buy them right from Sam's. I mean, why not? They created them, so why not reward their efforts and help them stay in business? So I could order it from them for 15 bucks. Um, but I do have one more other place I can check. Let's see if I can get that Beatman's info. And that is CapeOldRadio.com, which is a fantastic service to the community. They have indexed all the Beatmans and Riders service info and put it into a searchable website. So I can type in 5R37 or manufacturer or model and so on and search it. And there are no hits on Riders, but we do have the hit on Beatmans. Volume 15 from 1955, page 8. So, we know that, but how do we get it? You can't click on that link. Well, it just so happens, if you go to a website called makearadio.com slash beatmans slash index .php, they have scanned the Beatman's radio service manuals and we have 1955 right here it's in a weird format called well DJVU, I'm not sure how you pronounce that if it even is pronounceable so I had to install a DJVU plugin which allows me to view them directly in my web browser and if we start flipping through it see there it is 5R3 chassis used a new model 5R37. Alright, so save me save myself 15 bucks. And let's see, we got all kinds of general info. I mentioned it does use a circuit board. They've got some tips here on how to service it and so on. And there is the schematic. Definitely a hot chassis set. And uh, got the alignment procedure. Excellent. And that's a different model. So we just have three pages. So I'm going to print this out and bring it back into the workshop and continue on. Here's a closer look at that schematic. See the AC cord. And you can see there's a power switch. One side goes to the series wire tube filament, and the other goes right to the chassis. So definitely dangerous. Definitely want to use an isolation transformer while working on this. There's a rectifier and two electrolytics, a 50 and a 30 microfarad. I'll throw in a 47 and a 33 microfarad cap. That's close enough. Let's see, then there's a 0.047. It's probably a paper cap that needs to be replaced. A 0.05, 0.01, and so on. Once I pull the circuit board out, I'll double check those values. And see the tube lineup 12BE6, 12B6, 
BA612, AV650C5, and 35W4. Very common tubes. I've got spares on hand if needed. And the uh, other thing of note is, is that box with the dashed lines? That's that thing I referred to as a cup plate earlier. See, all those resistors and capacitors are inside that ceramic package and may need to be replaced. In fact, they give you a little tip down there if you do need to replace that with discrete components as a recommendation for capacitor values to use. Now, fortunately, I will be able to measure these resistors embedded inside there. Because if you look close, we've got a 6.8 mega resistor. It's going to the external pin 1, and then if you follow it around, it goes to pin 4. R6 goes from pin 6 to uh, pin 7, and R7 is between pins 5 and pin 4. So if I measure resistance between those points, those are the values I should get. If those are really far off, I will have to fabricate something with discrete components, but I've had pretty good luck with these in that uh, I've never actually had to fabricate one from scratch. They've always been working well enough. And uh, my biggest fear really is these guys because they don't give you the values for those capacitors. These are the IF cans and you may have heard that quite often in these radios those caps go bad because they're just made from uh, some sheets of metal with a sliver of mica in between and those can deteriorate over time. But let's not worry about that right now. Next up I want to get this thing out. It looks kind of like the circuit board is just it's, it just slides in in this channel, but it's not, not moving. Guess I better pull the knobs off the front. One. Bigger knob. Ah, got lucky that time. And not always so easy to pull off. Aha. Uh -huh. Phillips screw, I bet that's what's holding this thing in. So I'm gonna get this working. <clears throat> I will uh, give this cabinet a good cleaning. Let's definitely get some gunk on it. Alright, I got it. Now, looks like the speaker is hardwired in. So I can't just unplug it. That's a bitch. Oh, I'll have to take that out as well then. Okay, I just had to take out two screws holding the speaker in place and I was able to extricate the whole thing now. So before I damage any of this stuff, I'm going to unsolder the antenna and the speaker and set those aside and then focus on this little circuit board here. That's better. Much easier to work on now. Be careful when you work with early printed circuit boards like this. These traces lift off very easily. So I've got my variable wattage soldering iron turned down to about half the normal power level that I use. And I uh, use some solder wick, also have a solder sucker, and I have some flush diagonal cutters. Very handy so you can get right in there and nip leads off. I also pulled all the tubes out and I've noticed that some of these tube sockets are a bit loose. So something else that happens is uh, See, it looks a even a little charred around here. So these tubes, you know, over the years, they get hot and it uh, starts to affect the circuit board. Get some, and also, if people replace tubes and these sockets get wiggled, uh, you can get cold solder joints. So I'm going to go around and just lightly touch up all these solder connections. Now, as for recapping, actually, uh, it's not a whole lot to do because some of these caps are ceramic and very very likely that they're still good. So there's actually only this 0.05 here and a 0.047 here. I'll replace them both at 0.047. None the electrolytic. 
which might uh, also still be good. Uh, I guess I could get out my solar capacitor tester and check it out. But even if it is good, I would just as soon replace it anyways while I got this thing taken apart. These things don't last forever and eventually it will go bad, so why not? I popped that can of electrolytic out and made note of the two sections below. See one's got a little square symbol next to it and one has a triangle. And there's our shown here. Well, the square is 50, the triangle is 30. And then I mounted the two new electrolytics and I got really lucky in that they fit right into the old hole. So don't have to fabricate any kind of a holder or mount them in an awkward position. They fit right in. Now I went through and checked the resistors. This 100 is a bit high. I'll uh, replace that. It's measuring like 150. And uh, this 150 is measuring like 165. So I think I'll replace that too. Now for the bad news. This cup light, well, it's pretty far off. I'm still going to try running the radio with it in, but unfortunately, uh, yeah, they're, they're pretty off. So that one should be 6.8 meg between pins 1 and 3. Let's see. 2, 3, and I am measuring almost 9 meg, so that's pretty high. And as for the others, this should be 470K. And look at that. It's almost 800K. So, that's not so good. And the final one, let's see. Final section should also be another 470K. And yeah, or over 800. So these resistors have all drifted quite far up in value. However, it doesn't mean it won't work. What this uh, appears to be is it's uh, after the detector. So it's um, an RC filter network. So even though they're off in value, I bet it will still function to some extent. It might, might actually work just fine. We'll see. All right, so what's left? Uh, not much. I'll replace a couple of out of tolerance resistors up here. I'll clean and lubricate the tuning cap. I'm going to wash all this flux crud off the uh, board there. Try using this stuff. Got my local home improvement center. And oh, I'll check the tubes. And I might as well use the Knight 600 V2 tester that I just got working last week. I finished testing all the tubes and they all test OK, so I reinstalled them along with the one shield. I have the radio plugged in to a 60 watt bulb in series and then it's going to a Variac. So I'm isolated from the line voltage and if there are any shorts or any problems here, that 60 watt bulb should save this from any problems. When I turn this on, that bulb should light up bright because these filaments are cold which means they have less resistance as they heat up the resistance on these increases the current draw should drop and that bulb should dim down and at some point if everything is working more or less we should hear some sound so here it goes alright it's a good sign bulb lit up and then dim down No sound from the speaker yet. All right, we got a buzz. I've got this all the way at one end of the dial, so start tuning it. There's something. Kind of weak. 
try rotating the antenna. It's got it lying flat down right now, which is not exactly the ideal situation for reception. That's better. All right, so <laughs> it's definitely a good sign. Sort of working. And I got the volume at 100%, and that's this is WMAQ, which is a local station, so not the greatest gain. Well, that's a lot better. It's probably AM 670, and that's so loud. I got the volume almost all the way down now, and it sounds good. So, not sure why, but AM 560 very weak. Manipulating the antenna is helping a little bit, but not too much. Oh, I'll just keep going through the dial. So it seems like other than the uh, far right at AM560, it's actually working quite well. Alright, now that the radio is pretty much working, I'm going to move on to the cabinet, which is rather dirty. I'm going to use some mild dish detergent and a sponge and clean this up as best I can. It appears this is black uh, plastic and it's painted white, so I don't want to use anything too aggressive on this. So I'll do a basic wash down and then see how it looks. And then I might try some Novus number two, but I can't get too aggressive with buffing this out or I will wear through the paint. I cleaned off the cabinet with some warm soapy water, but that really didn't do a whole lot. So now I am moving on to the Novus number two. And that's working quite well. I've already done this section right up here. And now I'm moving on to the rest of the top. It's actually working better than I was expecting. Now, there are definitely some areas where it's worn down to the underlying plastic, like along this side here. But uh, otherwise, it's really a lot more respectable looking now. We just get this one section out here. Pretty happy with it. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to. Let's see. Yeah, I don't think that's on the surface. I think that's actually just worn through the paint. Oh well. Maybe not. Well, <laughs> I spoke too soon. A little more rubbing here. Yeah, most of that is coming out. Alright, so I'll, I'll keep at it. And this will come out looking a heck of a lot better than it did before I started. The Novus number two did a nice job of cleaning off all the blemishes, other than the paint chips, of course. Those aren't going to come back. And finally, I went over it with some cleaner wax. And I also soaked the knobs in a bit of detergent, and that cleaned out the gunk pretty good. So, here it is, playing fairly well. 
So that concludes another Friday Night Restoration video. I hope you guys enjoyed this look in an Admiral 5R37 radio from the mid-50s. With more than 25,000 cars sold and counting, Muller's Woodfield Acura always has the best price, selection,